we just arrived to the Southeast Overland and Off-Road Expo in Northern Florida. So we're gonna go meet some new friends. Finally get to meet people in the community of overlanding and off-roading. So can't wait to check it out. Yeah, should be a good time. <laughs> While the Expo's display focused mostly on Toyotas, Jeeps, and van life, we found the educational seminars to be the most interesting sharpening not only our off-road expertise, but first aid and search and rescue as well. I know my 911 dispatch center, as soon as they get in coordinates, they are automatically in, on, their, on one of their computers, they're punching it up to see where it is. So they send the right units out there. If it's out on the water, they're gonna send marine units and an aircraft. If it's on land, they're gonna send uh, the sheriff's department and me. So we just finished our first search and rescue seminar. It's pretty interesting. Talking about signaling devices, being stay in put when you realize you're lost and yeah, number, be prepared. Number one tip was to stay put. It's interesting because we don't really do a good job of planning for search and rescue. You never think that it's going to happen to you. But um, listening to this sheriff talk about all the suggestions that he has really, really uh, puts it into perspective as to how important it is for when you go hiking or driving trails okay. or just being out there in the wilderness. You want to make sure that you check the extremity to make sure you still have pulses. Why is that important? Well, we don't want to cut off circulation, right? Uh, to make sure you have good pulses at your extremities after you apply some pieces. So how do I do that? Strawberry margarita. During the raffle, an announcement was made that an overlanding cat had escaped overnight and has gone missing. Oddly enough, we thought we heard a cat outside our camper that morning. We're at this overland event. We're the only ones basically with a Ford truck. Everyone else has Jeeps, Tacomas. Oh yeah, and we're the only ones with a camper, so we don't fit in. Someone brought their cat to this expo and the cat got out of their tent and now the cat seeks shelter in our truck underneath here. It's laying there on top of our spare tire. Kitty, kitty! I couldn't find anyone, so I left the first half of the motorcycle tent now. And I guess I'll find somebody. I heard some meowing. And I, my wife bit down and found your cat on top of our spare. Oh, wow. Good luck so in it. On the other side. Hi. 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 Yeah. How are you doing? Hi. 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 She's, she's, she's like, camping! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, for whatever reason. No. It's okay. Got you. It's okay, baby. Uh, it's okay. What are you doing? Do you want to go see Molly? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Hi, baby. <laughs> the cat is so scary. Yay. <laughs> You're the <laughs> Southeast Overland and Off Road Expo Miracle. Yes. I know, we need a picture of her face. The two-day expo went by quickly, and we got to meet people from all over the southeast. But we're most happy everyone made it home safely, even the cat Luna. We left the expo and drove to West Tower Hunt Camp in Osceola National Forest, not far from Lake City, Florida. Free boondocking with a 14-day stay limit and an outdoor shower with water. That is over there. We woke up this morning to a lot of rain and we're located just outside of Ocala in Lake City, Florida. Jacob realized this morning that there was a flood watch in our county where we're located. So kind of nerve wracking, um, but 
we're used to the flood watches and flood warnings in the Midwest where it's very hilly and there's a lot of low points. So you seek higher ground. Here in Florida, it's pretty dang flat. So we're really not sure what to expect. We feel like 150 feet of elevation is a relatively high spot in Florida, uh, which is what our elevation is right here. Um, there's no big bodies of waters near us. We're pretty inland. And so we're not sure what to really do, not sure what to expect. I think we've missed our chance to leave. There's no way we could pull the camper out of here. So if we did leave, we would be leaving the camper just because of how sandy and silty, is silty the right word? Yeah. Sandy and silty it is, it would be like driving on snow. It's horrible. The forest roads are almost like quicksand. It, last night we drove through the rain, we had to go get uh, some more gas and propane and the road it was almost like driving on like a slushy snowy road so towing the camper after this morning's rain is definitely out of the question so right now we're just going to kind of sit by and wait it out and keep an eye on our surroundings and hopefully the water doesn't rise yeah hopefully no flood do you hear the rain can you hear it, it sounds like we're in a shipping container Unfortunately, we don't have any conference calls today, so that's a good thing. <laughs> and you might be able to tell there's a little bit of a pond out there. Things you need to be ready for when overlanding full time is have a game plan. Um, this is something we haven't really talked about. Like, what if there is flooding in an area of Florida? And there's a gator, an alligator, in the pond right next to us. So if it does flood, I don't want to be next to a gator in the waters. you guys how consistent this rain has been had to tilt the awning here so I can get a little bit of relief from the rain and so I won't collect water it's dripping down in there you can see I had to turn the truck around and I found a little concrete pad there so I could park the front end up so the bed of the truck wouldn't fill up with water so just waiting out this rain to shut the generator off and cooking lunch. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel to follow along for more adventures.